get raised in this life Because they told us we was black when we really didn't realize And I don't wanna be no plug, that's all they talking about I don't wanna be no thug, that's all they talking about I don't wanna be no hitter, that's all they talking about I'm in the book of Hebrews, chapter 12 and verse 11 Now no chastising for the present seem to be joyous, but previous Nevertheless, afterwards it yields the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby. You got a question? You you believe in the Bible? Are you a Bible believer? Do you believe in the Bible? You don't believe in the Bible. What do you believe in? Nothing? I can't hear you. I understand, I understand. So we, we just caught you, what you were doing, we just wanted to ask you what, what you, you know, what did you study at? I studied at Boston College. Boston College? Yeah, I studied early, early college. Okay. So, like, origin, uh, basically, it's very long. After getting there, it was like, yeah, early college. Early church father? Yeah. Kind of thing? Okay. Yeah. yeah, I'm just I'm interested in seeing what you guys are doing. I thought you guys might be like, Nation of Islam. No, we're not the Nation of Islam. No. No. <laughs> What what type of uh, theology are you are, are you familiar with? Like familiar with Arianism? Can you explain it to us? Actually, no, they, uh, that's not Arianism at all. They don't believe that he became godlike. Actually, Arianism is what sparked the arguments that led to the Council of Nicaea, right? I mean, but you said that it came from like Germany in the 5th century, but Arianism predates that. Oh, so it was allowed, it was very prominent in Germany. Okay, yeah, 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 I mean, I, yeah, it most likely probably, you know, but but I'm saying that, that was, that's what led to the arguments of the Council of Nicaea, because, and even in the Council of Nicaea, you know about the Filioque argument, right? So they didn't even know about the, uh, the what's it called, uh, if the father, if the son came out the father or if he, you know what I'm saying, uh, yeah, it, or eternal with them, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And that, it, 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 and even in the first, in the first, uh, the first I see in Creed, what, it, I, I, uh, the Filioque was part of it, you know what I'm saying? The Filioque the, the uh, argument. Absolutely, because it also Arianism also saying that Jesus is a, is a creation of the Father. You know what I'm saying? So that's the most I mean, that's the truth. Of, that's what the scriptures actually saying. Actually, go to Micah five and two, and you give me and, and you give me the blue letter. All right. Before you go, do you know do you, do you know who do you, who do you descend from in the Bible? Who, who do you who do you descend from in the Bible? I don't even know what the Yes, because all nations come from certain people in the Bible, right? We all come from Adam, right? We all come from Adam, right? Okay. So why do you ask me to know? Okay, let me show you exactly who you descend from. Then. 
Okay, check check this out. You're an Edomite according to the Bible, you're going in the change, all right? That's right, right, that's right. You're going in the change for the atrocities of which your ancestors have done to the two children of Israel. Right? Right. All right. Actually go to five right. Micah five and two. Okay. This is the book of Micah, chapter five, verse two. But thou Bethlehem Ephrata, though thou be little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of thee shall come forth unto unto me that is to be ruler in Israel. Whose going forth have been from old, of old, from everlasting. So his going forth is coming from old, from everlasting, right? Let's see exactly what the Hebrew is saying, because this is written in the Hebrew, right? Right here we get an English translation. Let's, let's, let's see exactly what the Hebrew is saying. Read. Um, it's Strong's H fifty seven sixty nine. I on. It means long duration, ancient time. Long time of past, forever, always, everlasting. The word from origin. Hold on, hold on, Come forth, the individual, so I got the wrong thing. Oh, he's going forth, right? Ah, okay, yeah. So that's strong. It's H4163. Uh, Mawat And it says, origin, place of going out from, origin. This, this prophecy is about Hamashiach, uh, who the world knows as Jesus Christ. So Christ has an origin, man. But the Christian church will tell you that he's God in the flesh, right? But he got some origin. What do you got? Got another piece of read. So this is Peter 1 and 3. First Peter 1 and 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Hamashiach and Hawashai, which according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Hamashiach and Hawashai from the dead. Blessed be the mighty Father, right? Oh, Hamashiach also. Read that again. God. It says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord uh, Amashiach and Hawashai. Blessed, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Hamashiach and Hawashai. Read. Which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Hamashiach and Hawashai from the dead. So the mercy comes from the most father, the most high God, right? And it was through the through the resurrection of Hamashiach and Hawashai. Read. This is the book of Colossians, chapter 3 and verse 10. And have put on the new man, which is renewed in the knowledge after the image of him that created him. Where there is neither Greek. And have put on the new man, which is renewed in the knowledge after the image of, the, of him that created him. Put on the knowledge of the image of, of him that created him. That created Hamashiach Yahushua, man. So Christ is a creation, man. Right? That's it. Read. Uh, it's the book of Ephesians, chapter 3 and verse 9. And to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery, which from the beginning of the world have been hid in God, who created all things by Jesus Christ. So he used Jesus Christ to create all things. So the Most High God is the creator. He created Jesus Christ, which through Jesus Christ he created all things. Read. Now this is John 20 and 17. Yahweh Shai said unto her, Touch me not, for I am not yet ascended to my Father. He said, Touch me not, because I have this after the resurrection, right? And, and the woman was right, right, right about to hug him or touch him. He was like, no, no, Don't touch me not, because I haven't ascended to my Father. And what? But go to my brethren and say unto them, I ascend unto my father and your father. My father and your father, read. And to my God and your God. My God and your God. So if you're going to say Jesus Christ is God, the Most High God, then you're saying that the Most High God has a God. Revelation 3 and 12. This is the book of Revelation, chapter 3 and verse 12. Uh -huh. Him that overcometh will I make a pillar in the temple of my God. Christ saying that 
him that overcometh, he's going to make a pillar in the temple of my God, one. And he shall go no more out, and I will write upon him the name of my God. My God, two. And the name of the city of my God. And the name of the city of my God, three. Which is New Jerusalem, which cometh down out of heaven from my God. It's coming in, in, from New Jerusalem that's coming out of heaven from my God. And I will write upon him my new name. So in that verse itself, four times, it's saying that Jesus Christ has a God, man. So Christians, what are you talking about? Christian church has been lying to our people for centuries, man. Right. It's time for our people to wake up, man, and realize that that's nothing but a money trap. That whole lie was constituted for him, for you can have a, a, a misconception in your mind that you can't be perfect for the commandments because only Jesus Christ is perfect. That's a lie, man. Christ told you to be perfect as our Father is perfect, man. The Christian church is a goddamn liars, man. Right, that's it? What do you got? I'll pray this to the Most High, and that's the truth. The Christian church has been lying to us for centuries and centuries, indoctrinating our people with this false theology and giving us lies. But we're here to bring you the truth of the Bible. And that's why we cry loud here every week to bring you the truth of the Bible. To let the black, Hispanic, and Native American man to let you know that your true heritage is this Bible. Right. And the way you're supposed to live, you'll find it in this Bible. That's your true heritage. As Baruch 4 and 1, this is the book of the commandments of God, and the law that endureth forever. All they that keep it shall come to life, but such as leave it shall die. See, when you come back to these law, statutes, and commandments, you're, you're coming back to life. Because right now you're in the dead state when you when you when you're living in, when you're living like the world and you're lost. You're dead. But when you come back to the laws of God, you come back to this book, it makes you alive. This is the book of Jeremiah, chapter 17 and verse 4. And thou, even thyself, shalt discontinue from thine heritage that I gave thee. And I will cause thee to serve thine enemies in the land which thou knowest not. For ye have kindled a fire in my anger, which shall burn forever. It is prophetic that our people, the black man, Hispanic man, Native American man, you will lose your heritage. You will lose your heritage. But we come out here week in and week out to wake you up out of sleep, to wake you up who you to who you truly are. An Israelite. Baruch 4 and 2. Turn thee, O Jacob and take heed of it. Walk in the presence of the light thereof, that thou mayest be illuminated. Walk in the presence of this light. The, la the law is a light. You need to walk in the presence of this light. Black man, Hispanic man, Native American man. You need to walk in the presence of the light. Give not thine honor to another, nor the things that are profitable unto thee to a strange nation. Don't give yourself unto these things that are strange to you, that don't belong to you. The things that's going on that, the things that these other nations are doing that don't belong to you. Don't give yourself to them. Don't give yourself to those things. And our stuff don't belong to them. It's, it's exclusive to us. It's just for us. It's just for Israel. It's just for the Israelite man. Verse 4, O Israel, happy are we, for things that are pleasing to God are made known unto us. The things that are pleasing to God are made known to us. These laws, these commandments, the promises that were given to us and to the seed of Israel. But you asleep out here. Don't know who you are walking around thinking you're Mexican, you're black, you're Puerto Rican. You're eating all kinds of abominations. You're worshiping idols. You don't know what you're doing out here, but we're here to wake you up. To let you know how to walk in this light. You got something, brother? This is the book of Proverbs, chapter 6 and verse 23. For the commandment is a lamp, and the law is light. 
and reproof of instructions are the way of life. The commandment is a lamp. The law is light. And that's what's going to wake you up, black man, Hispanic man, these laws, statutes, and commandments. And you need to know. You need to know this so you can repent from your ways and come back to the ways of God. You need to hearken to the word of God. You got a question, sir? No? You believe in the Bible? You do? You know who Jesus Christ died for? He died for, all, for what, you said all of it? All of us? Is that what it says in the Bible? Let me show you what it says in the Bible. Who he died for. This is Acts 5 and 30. The God of our fathers raised up Jesus, whom ye slew and hanged on a tree. Him hath God exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior for to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. You believe in Jesus Christ? Did you hear what it just said? Let's read it, let's read it again. What did it say? Huh? He died for the Israelites, right? Right. So he didn't die for all of us. He died for a specific people. His chosen people. This is Where it doesn't say that in the Bible. Where does it say that? You're implying it. <laughs> That's like just giving your opinion, right? Anyways, we here for our people, for the black, Hispanic, and Native American man. Where's your father from? If, e e ethnic wise, your ethnicity. Okay, so where's your father come from? E ethnic wise, nationally, your ancestors. Irish and English. Okay, so see, we're only out here for our people. And this Bible ain't for you, and Jesus Christ did not die for you. He died for Israel, and Israel alone. What do you think about that so far? Of course you don't. Because you don't agree with the Bible. You don't agree with the text. You, you, you're putting your, your implications upon the text, your presuppositions, things that you've been taught already, you implying it to the Bible. And the things that you want, but you're wrong. That's not the truth. You're blinded by a lie. This is Acts 2 and 21. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Ye men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you by miracles, wonders, and signs, which God did by him in the midst of you, as you yourselves also know. See, that's to you men of Israel, right? Let's read that from the top again, read that from the top again. You men of Israel, this salvation has come to you. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. I like you. Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. You men of Israel, that's what it says in the text. Why would I have to do what? What? I don't care what you do. Would you, would you like to show, would you like to show remorse for what your ancestors and people have done? What kind of remorse would you show? It is your people. Those are your people. Those are your ancestors. 
No. We're, we're, we're the same people. We're not the same people. There's, there's different nations. There's different people. There's different ethnic groups. The Bible, is, the Bible has a racial perspective about it. What, what was that? It doesn't, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Anybody. Here. Anybody. You, you ask what you can do. Read this. This is the book of Jeremiah, chapter 16, and verse 19. O oh Lord, my strength and my fortress and my refuge in the day of affliction, the Gentiles shall. What? The Gentiles. Are you a Gentile? You're a Gentile, right? You are a Gentile. Read. The Gentiles shall come unto thee. You're going to come unto us, read, from the ends of the earth, uh -huh. and shall say, surely, read it slow, and shall say, surely, surely, what? Our fathers have inherited lies. That's what's going on in the earth. Everybody's been taught that Jesus died for everybody. We're lied to. You know why? Because this Bible is a, is a cultural book, like he just referenced. Everything's about the Israelites in the Bible. Nobody else. Do, do, you, do you understand that? But you have you disagree with what he read earlier. You, you just say you disagreed, right? But we read it out of the same book that you believe in. So who's right? You your, and your feelings are, are the actual scriptures. We, we can't play a game like that. We have to read the text and believe the text. And nowhere, nowhere in the Bible does Christ talk about saving Gentiles, right or wrong. You, you don't know. Great. Listen, listen to this. Now, First Peter two and nine. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood. Who's Peter writing to? Was Peter sent to the circum? You don't have the answers. Okay, read that. Hey, Peter, Peter was sent to the, the Jews. Read. An holy nation. Read that from the top. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood. A royal priesthood. Talking about the Israelites because they're the priests of God. Read. Unholy nation. Holy nation. One nation. Read. A, a peculiar people. A peculiar people. Singular. Not everybody. Read. That ye should show forth the praise of him uh -huh. who hath called you out of darkness Read. into his marvelous light. Let's talk about a particular person. Most high sent Christ to deliver the, the Jews and the Israelites from their affliction and slavery. That's what he's talking about. Give me that in um, Matthew 15. What, yeah, Acts 11? Give me Acts 11 and 18. Give me a, we talked to her before. She's bugged out. Don't worry about it. Read. This is the book of Acts, chapter 11, verse 18. Uh -huh. When they heard these things, they held their peace and glorified God, saying, Then has God also to the Gentiles... Wait, wait a minute. It's talking about Gentiles. Read. Granted repentance unto life. Y'all for the Gentiles, repentance unto life. But let's keep reading what it's talking about. Read. Verse 19. Now they which were scattered abroad. Hey, what? They which were scattered abroad. The Gentiles were scattered abroad. The Israelites were scattered abroad. Read. Upon the persecution that arose upon this, upon, about Stephen, traveled as far as the Venus. Venus, read. And Cyprus uh -huh. and Antioch. What else? Preaching the word. Preaching the word to who? To none but unto the Jews only. Wait a minute. So even after Acts 10, when he went, when, uh, 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 Peter went to Cornelius, talking about he opened the gates to the Gentiles, it still says it was to the Jews only in the very next chapter. So who are the Gentiles really? The Israelites that were scattered in different nations being called by other names. That's what he's referencing. Where are you at? Give me first, where are you at? Yeah, you give me uh, First Corinthians 10. Read that. Now this is Matthew 5. Why, why are you scoffed from afar? No, you, you tell that to somebody else. Go to the Christian church and, and blend in with them. We don't believe that. Read. Matthew 15 and 21. Then Jesus went thence and departed into the coast of Tyre and Zidon. Uh -huh. And behold, a woman of Canaan. A woman of Canaan. Read. Came out of the same coast and cried out to him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. Son of Jesus. Have mercy on me, Jesus. Read on. My daughter is grievously vexed with the devil. Read. But he answered her not a word. Wait a minute. Jesus came for other nations, but he's not even talking to her. He's not responding to her. He shunned her. Why is he doing this if he came to die for the world? Right. Doesn't make sense. A Canaan, I came to him, asked, asked her to heal her daughter. Jesus ignored her. So he only came for the Israelites. Read. 
time. But he answered her not a word. And his disciples came. And the disciples came who taught me. Right? And besought him, saying, Send her away. And this came not away. She's not our people. Read. For she cried after us. But he answered and said, I am not. He, he is Jesus. Read. I am not sent. I'm not sent to who? But unto the lost sheep uh -huh. of the house of Israel. Right out of the Messiah's mouth. So how did he die for the world if he only was sent to the Israelites? Can you make that make sense? Can you make it make sense, sir? Do you have an answer for that? What's that? Where? Where, where did Jesus say that? I'm talking about Jesus here. Where, where does it say that? I don't know. Sir? What did you say? You don't know where it says that? So why are you, why are you telling me that? Then? Why are you speaking it to me when I'm reading the Bible right now? What's that? But you don't know what you're talking about. We just read earlier your, our, your, the Gentiles' fathers inherited lies. Those lies are passed down to you. That's right. And that's what we're trying to tell you. You know what's going to happen to the Gentiles in the future? I'll, I'll read that to you. If you're trying to be willing to get stuck right now. Nah, that, that's some Star Trek stuff. I don't know what you're talking about. Some, some, some Yoda. I don't, I don't know what you're talking about. That's madness. I, I don't know. It's some some uh, Yoda and Spock. Nah, bro. That's not it. <laughs> that's not it. Give me that. It's Isaiah 14 and 1. For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob and will yet choose Israel. The most high is going to choose the Israelites. Read on. And set them in their own land. And the strangers shall be joined with them. And the other nations. Read. And they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. And the people shall take them and bring them to their place. And the house of Israel shall possess them. And to possess these uh, other nations. Read. And the land of the Lord for servants and handmaids. For service and hey, made slavery, man. They're gonna be serving us. That's just what happened. But ultimately, if you're an Edomite, ooh, wee, there's, a, there's even in depth judgment for you. Read on. And they shall take them captives, whose captives they were. We're gonna take these other nations into slavery just like they took us into slavery. That's how the Bible works out, man. The Most High is a just God, a just power that he is like. Right. Give me that in, uh, uh, Zephaniah 2 and uh, 8, I believe. Go ahead. And they shall rule over their oppressors. They're gonna do what? Rule over their oppressors. Who's the person is in the modern age? The Caucasian man. The Edomite, the Bible. The devil the Bible speaks of the Edomite, you know. We're gonna rule over them. Everybody else. Give me Psalm 60 and 8. And then give me um Jeremiah 30 and 16. Read. This is the book of Zephaniah, chapter 2. Zechariah 2. Okay. You know the one? Give me that. This is Psalms 50, uh, 60. 60 and 8. Moab is my wash pot. What are the Moabites today? The Chinese man. They're going to be the wash pots of his wife. That's why they're already doing all type of dry cleaning and manicure, pedicures, and all that type of badness. They're getting prepared for the kingdom, man. Get, get, get the, the daughters of Zion right, getting their feet right, get the nails right, man. That's what's gonna happen. Read. Right. Over Edom uh -huh. will I cast out my shoe. Wait a minute. Right. That's why you see all the Edomites and the Moabites together. I, I see them drive around all the time. Being in, in, uh, in holy matrimony. I won't say holy matrimony, in matrimony, man. <laughs> but you read that? Uh, Philistia. Phil Philistia, talking about the Philistines, they're e Egyptians, read. Triumph thou because of me. Uh -huh. that it? Give me that. This is the book of Zechariah, chapter 2 and verse 8. Uh -huh. For thus saith the Lord of hosts, after the glory hath he sent me unto the nation which, which spoiled me. Uh -huh. For he that touches you touches the apple of my eye. Well, Zechariah, whoever touches the Israelites, touch the apple of my eye. You touch my chosen people, guess what? There's going to be a recompense for it. And that's, that's all throughout the Bible, even the New Testament. Give me that in uh, Thessalonians, 2 Thessalonians. And then give me Revelation 2 and 26. Go ahead. Jeremiah 30 and 16. Therefore, all they that devour thee. Everybody that devour the Israelites, even in the modern term. Everybody that's oppressed us today, read on. Shall be 
shall be devoured. They're gonna be devoured. Let's say the Bible. Read on. And all thine adversaries. Well, everybody that's adverse to us, that's against us, that oppresses us. Read. Every one of them. Every one of them. Not one person that tries to be grafted in. That's not what it's about. That's what the Bible says. Every one of these heathens. Read. Shall go into captivity. And what? Shall go into captivity. They're going into captivity, man. Period. And that's what we have faith in. Give me that in Psalms uh, uh, 149. Oh, give, give me that. And they that spoil thee shall be a spoil. Everybody that spoiled us and took our riches and our kingdom and our holy things out of our temple, we're going to do the same thing to them. Like it says in Isaiah 60, they're going to give all the riches to us. Period. There's not going to be any money system, no, no uh, uh, fiat currency. We're going to rule everything. Is that it? And all that prey upon thee will I give for a prey. Let's say it the Bible. Read on. This is the book of 2 Thessalonians. Chapter, yeah, yeah. chapter 1 and verse 6. Seeing it is a righteous thing with God. Read this look. Seeing it is a righteous thing. It is a righteous thing, read. With God. With God that do what? To recompense tribulation to them that trouble you. It's righteous to give payback to people that trouble us, according to the Bible. So there's no salvation for the other nations, man. If you're not a passion on your bloodline to send the Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, who are in the, in the Western Hemisphere, by the way, the black, Hispanic, Native American, man. You're finished, man. Period. Live it up. Be, be prepared for change. Read that. This is Psalm 76 and 6. That's not what I call for. Go ahead. Oh, this is Psalms 149. And verse 5. Let the saints be joyful in glory. Let them sing aloud upon their beds. Let the high praises of God be in their mouth. This is a song. Let the high praises of Yahweh be in our mouth. Read. And a two-edged sword in their hand. And a sword in our hands. Read. To execute vengeance upon the heathen. Read that again. To execute vengeance upon the heathen. That's what's going to happen. We're going to execute vengeance upon these heathens. I don't know what that thumbs down for. You know, you know how you know how they had a, uh, the Roman uh, uh, gladiator stuff? And somebody's about to die and the emperor gets a thumbs down. That's what happened to Edomites, man. He's foreshadowing his own future. Read. God. Let the high praises of God be in their mouth and a two-edged sword in their hand. To execute vengeance upon the heathen. We're going to execute vengeance upon the heathen. Read. And punishments upon the people. They're going to be punished according to the Most High's Most High's will. Read. To bind their kings with chains. To do what? To bind their kings with chains. Their kings are going into chains. So what's happening to the, the no are the peasants? Read. And their nobles with fetters of iron. Go ahead. To execute upon them the judgment written. Lord will it be that number. We're going to execute the judgment written. Read. This honor, this what honor? This honor, read. Have all his saints. Have all his saints. His saints are his wives, read. Praise ye, how? Praise the most high for. After thousands of years of being tortured and beaten and downtrodden and robbed and spoiled and indoctrinated with all this madness in America, which is Babylon, by the way, we're going to have to execute the judgment written in, in the near future, man. That's what's going to happen. If you believe in the Bible, you have to believe in this because it hasn't happened yet. What you got? It's Psalm 79 and 10. Wherefore should the heathen say, where is their God? Where is our God? We're, we're, in, we're in depression right now. That's what they're asking us. What is like speaking all this rhetoric according to them? We, they think that we're heretics and uh, uh, evil and things like that. But guess what? This is our book, not yours. Like that, that white dude came up here talking about he went to a theolo theological school, knowing nothing about the Bible. He studied the early church fathers, but guess what? He don't know the scriptures, actually, because this Bible doesn't pertain to him. Read. But guess what? They would have you believe that as long as you go through this uh, structured course in a theological school through the white man's uh, uh, indoctrinated uh, theology, you're ordained to be a minister now. You can go to build up a church and lie to more people. You get money from their people. That's all That's all it's about. You get a 501c3 charter, which is a tax write-off for lying to the people about their spirituality. Man. And who's the main people that build the church? The black, Hispanic, Native Americans. We believe in God the most because we are the people of God. But guess what? Why well, do get back to the truth of the Bible? That's our job to teach you and filter through the nonsense that you see every day, and that you hear every day. And even the heathens believe it. We believe the same thing the heathens believe. Don't you think that's an issue? And that's why they, the same uh, reason why they, they painted that white Jesus, man. You got to go through them and see him as God and go through him and his philosophy and his uh, schools and things like that in order to be received by him. That's madness, man. Read. Wherefore should the heathens say, where is their God? Uh -huh. Let him be known among the heathen. Let us be known among the heathen. Read. In our sight, uh -huh. by the revenging of the blood of the of thy servants, which is shed. That's what's gonna happen. The, the heathen gonna know that most highs with us when that judgment comes, man. 
when America gets blown to smithereens by Russia, Iran, North Korea, China, and all the other uh, 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 countries that are mentioned in Revelation, how they're going to hate the whore, Babylon, all that stuff's going to happen when we get right. We return back to the Most High. Where you at? Is something else? Where we going? Hold that. Go ahead. Amos 3 and 7. Surely the Lord God will do nothing, uh -huh. but he revealeth his secrets uh -huh. unto his servants, the prophets. Most High going to reveal his secrets to the servants, the prophets, man. The, the hidden uh, uh, esoteric knowledge in his Bible that's been hidden for centuries. He already, he already told Daniel when he was going to seal the book. And when Yahweh went back up to the heavens, that's when he opened up the understanding back up after he died in the first century. But guess what? Other prophecies had to had to occur in order for it to fall away, like Paul says in Thessalonians as well. And then come back to our heritage through, through the, uh, the awakening uh, uh, of uh, Abba Bivens, as they say, who uh, we believe is Elijah as well. You got something else? Give me Jeremiah 7 and 25, read. This is the book of Titus, chapter 1 and verse 10. For there are many un and there are many unruly and vain talkers uh -huh. and deceivers. And what? And deceivers. Especially them of the circumcision. That's in the the circumcision. Our people are vain, liars, and they believe everything they hear that's not come from a, 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 their own people for, for the most part. They want to get their spirituality from the enemy, man. It's crazy. And, it, and people that fall away from the Bible, mainly it's our people as well. Everybody comes in there every week talking about something different in the Bible. Whether it's Islam or some type of African spirituality. Or maybe they're atheists. Maybe the dude that came up here that was a Buddhist, that was an ordained Buddhist from a jail cell. It's madness, man. It don't make no damn sense. You read a book and now you're an ordained Buddhist? That's how our people think. They just, they want to be empowered by something, what the original nationality was, or the heritage was. But they, if they get taught properly, hopefully the most high drop is a, a breadcrumb in them and the spirit in them for them to wake up. Is that it? Go ahead. Whose mouths must be stopped. Their mouths gotta be stopped. Because they're spreading lies and, and uh, it's, it's, it's going to elaborate on it, right? Who subvert whole houses. They subvert whole houses with their lies. They bring people under by their lies because people are subject to them that they think they're telling the truth. It's a feel-good message in the church. They don't talk about prophecy in the church. The only thing they talk about is Jesus Christ coming back. Or they'll say, oh, we're dying and going to heaven to be with Jesus. That's not what the Bible says. Because in the same token, it says the dead in Christ are going to rise first. So you mean if I die and go to heaven? When Christ comes back, I'm going to be right. I'm going to be taken out of heaven. That doesn't make any sense. Go ahead. Teaching things which they ought not. They teach things they ought not because they learn from the damn enemy. Read on. For filthy lucre's sake. For filthy lucre's sake. Money. They lie for money. They get us. They sell out for money. They manipulate people for money. All that type of stuff. I learned something very interesting yesterday. I'm going to get to it in a second. Is that it? Read that. 25 all the way. Uh, read that. Yeah, read the um, 28. Jeremiah 7 and 25. Since the day that your fathers came forth out of the land of Egypt uh -huh. unto this day, read. I have not. I have even sent unto you all my servants, the prophets. The most high sent the servants, the prophets, in every uh, uh, captivity that we've been in, including saints captivity, mystery Babylon. Read. Daily rising up early. They rise up early. We, we don't have to be out here. We are here doing the free charge. Read. And sending them. And sending them. Read on. Yet they hearken not unto me, nor incline their ear. They listen, but they don't want to hearken. They don't want to take hold of it. They don't want to be a part of this uh, uh, heritage that they belong to. They rather be part of the two thirds, man. And they're going to be destroyed for it. Read. But harden their neck. Uh -huh. They did worse than their fathers. They did worse than our fathers. Why? Because we saw the miracles of the Most High in the wilderness, and we still went on. We still built idols. And that's why they had to die in the wilderness when the children going into the promised land at that particular time frame. Read. Therefore, thou shalt speak all these words unto them, uh -huh. but they will not hearken to thee. They're not going to listen to the, the prophets of God. We're, we're racist and we're, uh, we're evil, like I said, we're wicked. We're not speaking according to the scripture, but that's all we're reading out of. We're reading out of the Bible, verbatim, read. Thou shalt also call unto them, uh -huh. but they will not answer thee. We're calling to our people every week, man. I've been out for the last four years doing the same job, the same duty, reading the same scripture to our people. Look how many people are up here now, maybe 15 people, maybe. There's millions of our people out here lost in the sauce. That's why we had to come out here and do it, whether they hear or whether they forbear as is written. Read. But thou shalt say unto them, This is a nation. This is the what? A nation Read. that obeyeth not the voice of the Lord their God. They don't obey the voice of the Lord their God. When we read the Old Testament, what's the first thing they said? Well, that's the Old Testament. What's wrong with the Old Testament? 
It's history in the Old Testament. It's prophecy in the Old Testament. It talks about Jesus in the Old Testament as well. Right. Because what our people want to give a, a, a love fest. Give me um, Isaiah, uh, what is it, 29? Give me that. Nor receiveth correction. Now, read that again. God, it says, this is a nation that obeyeth not the voice of the Lord their God. They obey not the voice of Yahweh. We'll read on. Nor receiveth correction. Nor what? Nor receiveth correction. Nor receive correction. That's the problem. There's so much pride and, 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 and false understanding and think they, they, they don't uh, things going on. They too busy for the most side, even though they say they believe in God. They know nothing about the Bible, they know nothing about the prophecies or the judgments of sinners. They think sinners can be saved, which is madness. But guess what? They don't want to receive correction because they're the most high try to stop their understanding. And it says that as well in Isaiah. He's going to make them uh, uh, have a, a deep sleep. He put a deep sleep on them. Read. Truth is perished. Truth is what? Perish. Truth is perished and not nowhere to be found. Read. And it's cut off from their mouth. It's cut off from their mouth. They don't speak truth. That's why they believe everything they do, says, man. The law is in a way with, oh, guess what? That feels right with me. I don't got, I don't got to worry about not eating pork or shrimp or a lobster. I can wear whatever I want, dress however I want, you know, be with whoever I want, which is, you know, not necessarily a major issue, but we prefer our people to be with our, uh, our same people, Black, Hispanic, Native Americans, man. And it's pretty, it's pretty stupid to choose from, if you look at the chart, read. Right? Ezekiel 13 and 22, because with lies, ye have made the heart of the righteous sad, whom I have not made sad. Read that again. Because with lies, ye have made the heart of the righteous sad, whom I have not made sad, and strengthened the hand of the wicked. That's what happened. The Most High allowed his enemy to be over us because we went off so bad in the ancient world. We went to captivity after captivity for sinning mainly because of our idolatrous spirit. We want to be like other, other nations. Our, our, our power is in, in, in the heavens, man. We can get that in a second, read. Right? That he should not return from his wicked way by promising him life. Read that again. Con, uh, and strengthen the hands of the wicked that he should not return from his wicked way by promising him life. That's what happened. We get lied to for so long when somebody speaks contrary to what you actually uh, believe already, which is called a presupposition or you know something that you, maybe the Most High did it on purpose to deceive our people, which is uh, also what happens in the Bible. When somebody has a feel-good message for you, we don't got to change that much. All you got to do is just believe in Jesus, which we, we preach that as well. But guess what? You got to do something about it. But we're going to read another verse that speaks exactly what he, he just read. We want to hearken to lies, and, we, and those feel-good messages feel good because we don't have to change nothing. We don't have to get right before this judgment day. Give me um, Amos 5 and 18. Read. Read that. Give me 30 and 10. You see? Thought it, uh. Yeah, give me that. In the book of Isaiah, chapter 30 and verse 9, that this is a rebellious people. The rebellious people, the Israelites in America, and all scattered across the world that don't know the truth. Read. Lying children. Uh -huh. Children that will not hear the law of the Lord, which say to the seer, see not. Read that again. Which say, which children that will not hear the law of the Lord. They don't want to hear the law of the Lord. That's our problem. That's why we're in this predicament. Breaking the laws of God, God's in slavery, period. We have spiritual curses on us because we don't want to get right. It's not that hard, honestly. The moral compass of the Most High is perfect. That's what it says in the Bible. It's, it's for us to be separate from other nations. For them to look at this, oh, this is a wise and understanding people. Everybody knows that scripture. Deuteronomy 4. But guess what? We were so far removed from our heads and culture been beat down and trodden down, things like that, and lied to. Now when we have to uh, revert back to our actual culture, it's foreign to them. They don't know what's going on. Read. Verse 10, which say to the seers, say to the seers, the seers are prophet as well, read. See not, see not, don't see my wickedness, don't judge me. That's what everybody wants to say, don't judge me, but guess what? The Bible says we're going to judge everybody on earth. Right. We're going to judge angels, read. And to the prophets, Prophesy not unto us right things. Don't prophesy to us right things, read. Speak unto us smooth things. Speak unto us smooth things. Come as you are, stay as you are. Ain't that what the church says? All you gotta do is just believe and just sit in the pulpit, clap your hands, dance and sing, and eat that pork right at the church. That's what happens. They wanna listen to smooth things, smooth words, lies in the seat. 
And that's what people want to get hearken to because it feels good. They can do whatever they want on the weekend. Sunday morning, guess what? They get ref refreshed with wickedness, man. That's what happens. You start your week off with wicked church. That's why you're you going to spend the rest of your week in wickedness, man. So you get lied to. You don't get corrected in there. Go ahead. And they uh, which say, speak to us smooth things, huh? prophesy deceit. Prophesy deceit. That's what's wrong with our people, man. That's what they're comfortable with. You tell a brother and sister that they're not supposed to be smoking weed or doing drugs or uh, uh, doing uh, uh, or debating with other nations. Then they go, oh, well, you're racist. Well, guess what? God is racist. Right. And racist doesn't mean what you think it means. All it means is that I prefer my people over yours. That's all. That's all it means. I prefer my people over yours. Which is true. When you, you go to school in high school, guess what? You don't see what people look like you for the most part. Because that's, that's what's natural. Give me that in uh, Surat um, 13, I believe. Where you at? Where you at? What is that? Go ahead. On Lamentations 2 and 14 in the GNT, your prophets had nothing to tell you but lies. Their preaching deceived you by never exposing your sin. They made you think you did not need to repent. Man, ain't that a Christian church today? They might talk about repentance, but guess what? <laughs> it's, so, it's so comical that a church, you know, uh, uh, does their, their preaching, things like that. He gives you a sermon for about two hours. You sure emotions up. They got the little organ playing in the background, a little sentimental music. Does anybody uh, want to just have Jesus in your heart? You go down the little aisle, go in front of the pulpit. Do you have Jesus in your heart? And, and that's it. Like, that's it. That's all you got to do. It, that's not how it works. I mean, that, that's a different story. Right? That whole Holy Ghost and all that passing out, that, that's madness, bro. But uh, it can't be that simple because it's supposed to be a lifestyle change, a, a thought process change. I say this all the time, if you change how you think, you're going to change what you do. Right. And guess what? <laughs> the Christian church ain't going to tell you to change what you do. All you do is accept God, everything is clean now, still do Christmas, Easter, Thanksgiving, which is in the Bible. It's all paganism attached to it. But that's what we're comfortable with. It's, it's, we, we have uh, inherited the culture of the enemy, man. period. Right. You got something else? Where was you at? 13? Yeah, that's what I want. Give me that. Proverbs 15 and 10, correction is grievous unto him that forsaketh the way. That's what happens. When we correct our people, it's grievous to them. Because they're so comfortable in their skin, they want, they want to change. It's grievous to them because they don't see that what they're doing is wrong. They want to get influenced by TV and celebrities, things like that. That's, that's our detriment as a people. We want to follow people that don't have nothing to do with us. They don't have any community that we live in. They're living on a mansion. We're living in the ghettos. But guess what? Their music just, just touches home. Which is not a problem, but guess what? They're not telling you to get right. They're influencing the generations to come to do wickedness, to fall in line with their, their uh, uh, abominable acts. Read that. And he that hateth reproof, you know what? Hateth reproof. You hate reproof, hate that correction, read. Shall die. You're going to die. Why? Because you're a sinner. And the ways of sin are death, as is written. And it also says what? Give me um. First Peter 4. Hold that. You, you can drop that, actually. Give me First Peter 4 and uh, 17. Give me that first. This is the book of Sirach, chapter 13, verse 15. Every beast loveth his life. Every beast loveth his life, read. And every man loveth his neighbor. Every what? Every man loveth his neighbor. Every man loves his neighbor. And your neighbor, according to the Bible, is your fellow Israelite. Your fellow black, Hispanic, Native American, man, woman, and child. Read. All flesh consorted according to kind. All flesh according to kind, according to kind like I said earlier, you don't see lions running with leopards, man. Those are those are uh, habitatual enemies, man. They hunt the same animals, so the lions won't kill a leopard when he sees them. The lions won't kill a cheetah when he sees them. Why? Because he's cutting, he's, he's short stopping his food, his food supply in his family. That's what's happening. So us, in our sense, us being uh, Israelites, us pairing with the enemy, the white man, the Asian man, the Arab man, the East African, whatever the case may be, they're short stopping our uh, our kingdom by throwing us away from our heritage. That's what's happening. Give me that. And a man will cleave to his life. A man gonna cleave to his life. We're supposed to cleave to righteousness. Cleave to our own heritage. We're supposed to be separate, like I said before. As is written in the laws of God, read. What fellowship hath the wolf with the lamb? Exactly. What's a wolf doing with the lamb? 
I've seen a couple of videos where a lion was with a, a, a impala just chilling with it. You know, treating it as a friend. No problem, but guess what? That, that impala died, I'm sure. You know? <laughs> it, it was a, a slight glitch in the matrix, but matrix, but guess what? That impala's not going back to his mom that night. I'm sorry, read. So the sinner with the gun. Read that again. Over. What fellowship have the wolf with the lamb? Uh -huh. So the sinner with the God. So the sinner with the godly. What do you have to what do you have to do with a sinner if you're trying to live a righteous, godly lifestyle? And being godly means what? You're separate according to the laws of God. That's what it's talking about. Why would I hang with somebody that doesn't want to live the walk that I'm trying to get to? If I'm going into business, I'm not gonna go to the street corner and learn about business. I'm sorry. I'm gonna go to somebody that has practical uh, 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 knowledge in, a, in a, obviously in a, a righteous way, not in, in a drug game and things like that. I'm gonna learn actual business. I might go to school for it, that's not a problem. But there's things you can learn without going to school, which is what I prefer, honestly, but our people gonna do what they wanna do, which is all to their detriment. Because sometimes people get so puffed up in the knowledge of the world, like the, the dude from last week, he put out his diploma with somebody else's name on it, I'm like, that was retarded, but guess what? People wanna, and another brother I think two weeks ago, he was talking about, all oh, my family have degrees and their PhDs, but guess what? You're on the street corner missing teeth. Like, what? no offense, but you're not doing nothing but yourself. Right. Why are you bragging about the people and about what they accomplished? Wait, well, you didn't do it yourself. And that, and like I said, that now it's only going to get him an extra dollar in their pocket. It also reads what? Wisdom, or excuse me, riches profit if not in a day around. That money's not going to save nobody. Your righteousness and your, and your faith and your, your works going to save you. That's just written. You got something? Oh, you finished that? Go ahead. Um, what agreement is there between the hyena and a dog? Uh -huh. And what peace between the rich and the poor? Exactly. What peace between the rich and the poor? The rich is going to make sure the poor stay in their place. Even the middle class people going to stay in their place. You can break through slowly but surely. But guess what? That's not our, that's not our objective out here. To get rich and, and flourish in Babylon. Man. That's not what we want to do. That's it. Huh? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Leviticus 20 and 26. And ye shall be holy unto me. Everybody's gonna be holy unto the most I read. For I am the Lord, for I the Lord am holy. I the Lord am holy, which means separate. Read on. And have severed you. What? Severed you. Severed us, cut us off, read. From other people. From other people. Why can we do that today? Go ahead. That ye should be mine. That we should be the most high your house, man. With the apple of his eye, like I read before. We're supposed to be separate in our doings, in our works, how we act, how we walk, how we treat each other. Not trip off of who wears, who's wearing red and blue. Who's wearing yellow and all these other different gang colors, purple and all type of stuff. That's not, that's not, that's not how we're supposed to live our lives. But that's what's influenced and what's popular, are popular in the earth today. It, it sensationalized on TV and music because that's what sells. And guess what? That's not how we that's how we used to live in the ancient world. Even in the 1920s we were acting like that. And, and that actually gets to my point what I was referencing about what I read about um a movement called Us. Ultimately, uh, it was basically another black group fighting against the Black Panthers. I read about that yesterday. I'm like, damn, that's crazy. You mean to tell me the Black Panthers want to separate themselves from the government of, of America? And uplift their communities and there's another black basically the FBI funded these people to go against uh, uh, the Black Panthers other other uh, melanated men it's crazy and that's actually where you get Kwanzaa from Kwanzaa is from the people that were going against the Black Panthers come to find out it's craziness obviously that's not a, a, a biblical uh, holiday but it's more of a, a, a signification of, of, of quote unquote black people having freedom but guess what you were funded and, and uh, uh, swindled by the FBI to go against your own people. And that's a curse according to God, man. That's madness. And that's how cold it, the white man is, man. He sees two people trying to love with their people, he gonna uh, uh, influence them by uh, 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 having some type of COINTEL pro and to kick up dust and have us have fight each other. Same thing with Malcolm X. Marcus Garvey, he got uh, uh, shipped to his home country, Jamaica, because he was way too powerful at his time. My, uh, Martin Luther King we talked about last week, he sold us out to the white man. He's not a hero, I'm going to tell you that right now. He's not a hero at all. He, in, he integrated us into a burning building, as he said. He realized, oh, they swindled me into equality. The whole feminism movement, same ordeal. They got our women thinking, oh, if they want, don't want, if they want to get ahead in life, 
separate from your husband, create a single parent household, you're equal to a man. You can work and make the same amount of money as men. But guess what? That was just a ploy to start the whole uh, WIC program, uh, 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 another form of, um, what's it called? Um, uh, 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 what's it called? Not, not government system, but um, where you pay for your child, like um, child support. That's the way to get child support. So wait, okay, if your husband comes back, you don't have any benefits no more. But that's only affecting us for the most part. Even though, uh, uh, in, in reference to the numbers, there's more white people in America than us, but it affects us more because we're the ones that's more downtrodden. They have more opportunity than us. And pass them flyers out, man. But uh, we got something? Go ahead. First Peter 4 and 17, for the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of God. That's what's going to begin at the house of God. Who's the house of God? The black and straight Native American man. The Israelites of the Bible. Read. And if it first begin at us, it first begin at us, read. What shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of God? Yeah, what's going to happen to people that don't obey this word? Really talking about the two thirds here. But ultimately, he's talking about the whole nation because only one third is going to be saved to be elect. Read on. And if the righteous scarcely be saved, what? If the righteous scarcely be saved. If the righteous, if you keep these laws of God and endure to the end as Yahweh Shai will ordain them. Read that again, Salah. So and if the righteous scarcely be saved. If the righteous are scarcely saved, meaning what? They're saved by the hair and the chin, barely. Read. Where should the ungodly and the sinner appear? Where the ungodly and the sinner going to appear if the righteous are barely going to make them? They're going to be the ones. They, they, if there's a time clock, how, how we talk about buzzer beaters, things like that. If we're running a race, we have to break the world record or die. There's only going to be a certain amount of people that's going to cross that line in time to be saved from this judgment, man. So if you're not a part of that uh, elect number, the one third and the 144,000, guess what you're gonna get? The missile, man, period. That's what's gonna happen. Everybody knows what's going on with Russia and Ukraine right now. That's a Kickstarter to World War Three, and how the, uh, uh, the other countries that are uh, quote unquote pair with America are basically gonna turn their back on America. I literally just read on the way up here that uh, 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 what's it called? The WHO, the World Health Organization, or whatever the case may be, are going to basically strip America and over a hundred countries of their sovereignty. I just write that right before I came up here. What do you think that's going to move? What what uh, what chess pieces do you think that's going to play in the, in the future of the world? Stripping the countries of their sovereignty. You know what that means? That's leading us into a one world government, as they want to call it, where everybody has one religion, one uh, money system, one religious system. Which is all of Satan, by the way. That's not going to happen. Most eyes going to be way before that, I believe. But guess what? That's going to play a part in World War III because everybody's not going to get down with that. Stripping countries of their sovereignty, they're going to have to defend themselves and go against the grain of the, uh, the current government structure, the world power, which is mainly America. So America has a, the most strongest military, but guess what? If enough people like Russia, Iran, Ukraine, uh, uh, not Ukraine, but uh, North Korea, things like that, you know, start. Uh, Congregate with each other, which they already are, because we. Did, I just read that China sent military planes to uh, Taiwan yesterday, which is more more than likely trying to get their land back. Because Taiwan did originally belong to China, but guess what? Taiwan is signed with America, and even sections of China signed with America. But they they right up under Russia. Do you think China can go against the granite against Russia? Of course not. What you got? Yeah, give me that. Jeremiah, fifty and twenty three. On. How is the hammer of the whole earth cut asunder and broken? Who's that talking about? Who's the hammer of the whole earth? It has to be talking about uh, uh, who they call America today, Babylon, Mystery Babylon. They can go anywhere in the world outside of obviously North Korea and Russia and do whatever they want to do. Put an IMF bank there to, to uh, basically change the whole infrastructure of finances, put them in debt. That's what they do. That's what the whole uh, uh, quote unquote war on terror was about. When they were Afghanistan and Iraq, that's what happened. They didn't have an IMF bank in the country. Guess what? Let's stage 9 11 and let's go over there and put an IMF bank there to imprison them financially. That's how it works. Read. How has Babylon become a desolation among the nations? How has Babylon become a desolation among the nations? We read it earlier. Or we read it, we read it last week. How the fanners are going to fan them arrows at them. They're going to surround them with arrows and, and shoot arrows at them. And obviously, it's talking about missiles at, at, this, at that context. Because obviously, the prophets are seeing visions that it's going down in the future, and they're describing it as arrows, but it's really missile fire. You got something else? 
Yeah, you can get that. Give me that. Give me, yeah, give me that real quick. Con Jeremiah 51 and 2, and we'll send unto Babylon Fanners. Fanners, read. That's so Fanners. That's what Fanners. And this, just to make it plain, if you want to start a fire, uh, you start a small fire, and then you start blowing on it, right? You're fanning it with the wind to kick up the fire, to make it more powerful, read. Con, and shall empty her land, for in the day of trouble, they shall be against her round about. All these days shall be against her round about. And this is how you know Jeremiah is not prophesying about ancient Babylon. Ancient Babylon didn't get taken out like this. It has got usurped by the, uh, uh, by the, um, by the medial Persians, read. Against him that bendeth, let the archer bend his bow. Let the archer bend his bow, read. And against him that lifteth himself up in his uh, brigandine, and spare ye not her young men, Land. destroy ye utterly all her host. This is what happened. It's going to be a, a, a desolation, like I said. It's going to be perpetual smoke. Y'all got a flyer, sister? You got a flyer? Okay, not a problem. If you have any questions, you can let me know. I answer all questions up here. Give me that verse. This is the book of Ezekiel, chapter 13 and verse 10. Because, even because they have seduced my people, saying peace, uh -huh. and there was no peace. This is happening. Every time we join our hands with the Americans, the uh, 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 Democrat or Republican, we're supposed to vote for somebody that doesn't look like us first and foremost, and then trust in, in their political system that they built up to oppress us. By law in the Constitution, it literally says that the black man is, is three fifths of a human being. So, if we're three fifths of a human being, that means what? Our voting doesn't count. That's pretty much what it means. You're voting for something that doesn't, you don't matter. But it's the illusion of inclusion. That's what the whole democracy is about. Our vote doesn't matter. That's why nothing's changed in a hundred years since our people have been alive in, in this time frame. That's how it works. Is that it? Go ahead. And one built up a wall, and lo, others daubed it with untempered mortar. Uh -huh. Say unto them which daubed it with untempered mortar, that it shall fall. It's gonna fall, read on. There shall be a overwhelming shower, uh -huh. and ye, O great hailstones, shall fall. A stormy wind shall rend it. Lo, when the wall is fallen, uh -huh. shall it not be said unto you, Where is the where is the daubing wherewith ye have daubed it? Yeah, where are you hiding about? What happened to the wall that was protecting you? That's what it's going into. Go ahead. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, I will even rend it with a stormy wind uh -huh. in my fury, and there shall be an overflowing shower in my anger, uh -huh. and great hailstones in my fury to consume it. Yeah, that's what it's talking about, the future judgment. Man. Lord in Christ. I seen somebody earlier, I went on the mic. Dudes in the skirt. Muscle bound dudes in the skirt. Madness. You got Mary Jane's on. Madness, bro. Madness. They don't make no goddamn sense. But it does make sense in, in every sense. We're in San Francisco, right? The, the, the homosexual capital of the world. It's madness, man. Grown men, 50 years old plus, in skirts and dresses, man. It don't make any sense out here, man. It's crazy. That's what that's what destroys Sodom and Gomorrah. Homosexual activity, man. That's right. Same thing is what happened to America.